Today, let us share the Word of God under the subject, The Passover Holy Supper God Commanded Us to Keep. Let us take time to think about why Jesus earnestly told us to keep the Passover when He came to the earth 2,000 years ago. Under the subject, The Passover Holy Supper God Commanded Us to Keep, let us share the Word of God. About 3,500 years ago, the Israelites had been serving Egypt in agony, being poorly treated under hard labor for over 400 years. Soon after, God released the Israelites from the land of Egypt, the land of slavery through the prophet Moses. At that time, God redeemed the Israelites from Pharaoh, king of Egypt, with the great power of the Passover. Since then, God let them remember the Passover and celebrate it every year, emphasizing all the contents in the Law of Moses. There is a Leonardo da Vinci masterpiece called The Last Supper, right? This is the scene where Jesus celebrated the last Passover with His disciples. When Jesus came to the earth 2,000 years ago, He emphasized the importance of the Passover. He said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer on the cross. In the Gospels of Luke, Mark, John, and Matthew, we can see how eagerly He wanted to keep it, and through the four Gospels in the Bible, we can confirm that Jesus deeply treasured the Passover. It was the night before Jesus was crucified. That night is today. While having the Passover supper with His twelve disciples, Jesus kept emphasizing its importance, saying, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Today, however, the Passover that Jesus and His disciples treasured so much is not found anywhere. The question is, why don't all churches keep the Passover today? Jesus kept the Passover. Peter, whom all people respect, kept the Passover. John, the Apostle of Love, too, kept the Passover. Apostle Paul, who is regarded as a representative of the early church, also kept the Passover. All the members of the early church kept it. Jesus came to the earth to save mankind. In order to save people on the earth, He spread the teachings of salvation and truth. One of them was the Passover. Therefore, the Passover is very closely related with our salvation. If someone says, even without keeping the Passover, I can get to the eternal kingdom of heaven, it is a sin of treating as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him. This is clearly mentioned in the New Testament. Such people will be in first place for punishment and judgment. Setting everything aside, Today, let us only think, without keeping the Passover, can we go to the kingdom of heaven that Christ has prepared? Focusing on this, let us confirm the words of God in the Bible. As for the Passover God commanded us to keep, let us confirm it in Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And do what? 
teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. He said, teach them to obey His commandments. Even though Jesus Himself clearly commanded us to keep the commands, His commands disappeared. The Passover is one of them. In this verse, Jesus said, clearly think about what I've commanded you and preach that in Samaria and even to the ends of the earth so that all people can obey them. However, the Passover was abolished by people at the Council of Nicaea in AD 325. God commands us to keep it, but people say, no, it is not necessary. What will you gain from keeping it? People abolish God's command. In fact, religious leaders were the ones at the forefront of abolishing God's command. In this way, the truth has disappeared from this world, and the Dark Ages came. Throughout generations, we could not find the truth, and the contemporary religions came to take root. What were the problems in this process? All the truths of life from God were all miserably trampled upon. Then, what was preferred among people? The sun god religion that was worshipped in Rome was venerated and upheld. And it was taught in churches as if it were a teaching from God. Later, it took root in Christianity. Today's Sunday worship, Christmas, and cross reverence are rules made by men. Such strange things that have nothing to do with God's salvation have become an emotional anger that dominates the churches today. We need to go back to the Bible and look more closely at the teachings of Christ who came to this earth for our salvation. We must clearly understand what God's will is. Sending His disciples, Jesus said, Go to Samaria and to the ends of the earth and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. What exactly did Jesus tell us to keep and what did He entrust us with? Through the Gospel of Luke chapter 22, let's confirm that one of those teachings was the Passover. Let's see Luke chapter 22, verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat what? To eat the Passover. Verse 9. Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they did what? They prepared the Passover. Verse 14, when the hour came, the Passover has its appointed date and time. It cannot be kept at any time. Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat, what? To eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Jesus said, I have eagerly desired. This shows how much he emphasized keeping the Passover. He could have said, I have desired to eat this Passover. Because the Passover is so closely related with our salvation, he said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover. Since no one can get salvation, without keeping the Passover. Even the day before He was crucified, holding the Passover ceremony, He engraved a very deep meaning in the Passover. 
let's see the meaning in verse 19. Let's continue to see the scene of keeping the Passover, verse 19. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Giving the bread of the Passover, Jesus said, This is my body, given for you. And do what? Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, that contained the Passover wine. Having the Passover wine, he said, This cup is what? This is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Proclaiming this amazing covenant, the new covenant, Jesus repeatedly emphasized that he eagerly wanted to keep the Passover. There is one significant thing we must pay attention to. In Luke chapter 22, verse 7 through 20, who kept the Passover? Jesus kept the Passover. And who else? Peter kept it. And who else? John kept it. Jesus Christ, Peter, John, where are they now? They are all in the kingdom of heaven. The feast they kept was the Passover. Jesus granted them the Passover, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Peter kept it. Christians adore Peter very much. John is the apostle of love. Among the twelve disciples, we can learn many things from John. Then, did only Peter, John, and Jesus Christ keep the Passover? The words, with my disciples, in verse 11, include all twelve disciples. The beloved disciples of Jesus kept the Passover together with Jesus. Then, what about the saints of the early church? Even after the crucifixion, was the Passover continually celebrated? After Jesus was lifted up on the cross, Apostle Paul entered the truth and left brilliant achievements in the Gospel work. Did the Apostle Paul keep the Passover? He repeatedly emphasized the Passover, saying, This is what the Lord commanded me to keep, so this is truly an important truth. In the New Testament and in our faith, if we exclude Jesus Christ, Apostles Peter, John, and Paul, whose faith can we follow and learn from? The very important truth that all the central figures of our faith kept was the Passover. Apostle Paul kept the Passover. Shouldn't we confirm this? Let's move on to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? Certainly not. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. This is what appears in Luke chapter 22, verse 7 through 20, right? Apostle Paul is the person who received the truth after Jesus' crucifixion. Even the Apostle Paul said, I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. And he mentioned that it was the Passover of the New Covenant. He is now explaining 
the Passover bread and wine in this scene. Apostle Paul kept the Passover. Peter kept the Passover. Jesus kept. And Apostle John also kept the Passover. Jesus' disciples and all members of the early church kept the Passover. Isn't it strange that today's churches do not keep it? Jesus came to proclaim the truth of salvation to humankind, knowing the critical situation of His crucifixion the next day. Despite that, He proclaimed the new covenant Passover in the evening of the last day, saying, I eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Why was that? The Passover contains God's very important covenant. Let's see John chapter 6, verse 53. Verse 53. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no what? No life in you. You have no life means you are dead. Simply put, though you have faith, it is a dead faith. The faith of those who do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood is dead. Simply put, it is a vain and useless faith. Regarding what? Regarding salvation, forgiveness of sins, and regarding the kingdom of heaven. They are all useless. This is what Jesus is clearly telling us. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has what? Has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Jesus engraved the new covenant Passover, the only method and way for us to have the Holy Spirit of Jesus in us. He promised, when you eat my flesh and drink my blood, I will remain in you and you in me. When we understand what Jesus referred to as His flesh and His blood, in the scene of eating His flesh and drinking His blood, we can better understand why the Passover we are keeping today is so important to us. Let's go to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, verse 17 reads, On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate. What? Celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. It is certain that Jesus kept it. So did His disciples, Peter and John. All the twelve disciples kept it, and so did Apostle Paul. The truth all these people kept was the Passover. The words in Luke chapter 22, verses 7 through 20, and Matthew chapter 26, verse 17, show the same scene of keeping the Passover. But in the Gospel of Matthew, there are more detailed explanations. Verse 26 says, While they were eating, Jesus took bread. The bread He took refers to the Passover bread. Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is what? My body. God's promise in John chapter 6, verse 54. God's promise, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day, is contained in the truth 
of the Passover. Verse 27, Then he took the cup. What is contained in this cup? It contains the Passover wine, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. What does the Passover wine mean? Verse 28 gives us the answer. This Passover wine is what? My blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, for the forgiveness of sins. When we put together John chapter 6 and Matthew chapter 26, Jesus promised, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. What is the truth that can raise us up at the last day? It is the Passover. As God established the Passover, as the only truth that enables us to eat Jesus' flesh and His blood. He said, this Passover is given for you. Saying, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins, He clarified, this is poured out for you. This feast Jesus mentioned in Luke chapter 22 is this Passover. This Passover of life had been kept well in accordance with the will of Jesus for over 300 years. The Roman Emperor Constantine seemed to carry out policies supporting Christians. But the fact is, he planted in them many doctrines from the Sun God religion. Sunday worship originated from one of the representative doctrines of the Sun God religion and Christmas originated from the birthday of the Sun God, the birthday of the Sun God, which has nothing to do with Jesus' birth, was planted in the church nowadays, and churches with such doctrine were given much support by the government. Since the Roman Emperor supported Christians with favorable policies, such as the construction of church buildings, exemption from enlistment, an exemption from taxes, a Christian structure was formed that could not escape the Roman Emperor's eyes. It continued until the Dark Ages and was passed down to this day. However, those who seek salvation and hope for heaven should never follow man-made rules. The Apostles never kept Sunday. The Apostles never celebrated Christmas. The Apostles never worshipped the cross. If we believe in Jesus, we must pay attention to His teachings and must have an interest in the faithful life of the Apostles who followed the will of Jesus. Those things were not found in the time of Jesus. However, around 300 years, after Jesus' ascension, the churches gradually became secularized and corrupt, and they have become what they are today. Then, today, should we follow the churches that have been going against God's will through the Dark Ages? Never. We want to be saved and go to heaven, right? So we must fully accept the teachings that Christ proclaimed to save humanity when He came to this earth. The church that keeps the teachings is the most authentic church. Today, many churches argue about authenticity and heresy. What is the main point of authenticity and heresy? The church that preserves the teachings of Jesus Christ is the authentic church. The churches that have turned away from His teachings are the heretic churches. So just through this single truth, the Passover we celebrate today, we can clearly distinguish the authentic church from the heretic churches, can't we? In other words, those who celebrate the Passover have what? Have eternal life. Those who do not celebrate the Passover have no life. 
unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no… what? No life in you. This is God's judgment, God's decision, and God's conclusion. I will give the blessing of eternal life to those who eat my flesh and drink my blood through the Passover. This is the will of God. We must all accept this fact and understand it through the Bible. God has told us to celebrate the Passover, to give us the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, so that we can go to the Kingdom of Heaven. When Jesus explained about the Passover bread and wine, He referred to the Passover bread as My body, and He said concerning the cup filled with the Passover wine, This is My blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. There is a certain reason He taught this to us. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here today on this Passover to participate in Jesus Christ's flesh and blood. Then, what does it mean to participate in Christ's flesh and blood? When Jesus taught His disciples about the Lord's Prayer, who did He say is in heaven? He taught them that God is our Father. Then what do you need in order to form a relationship between a father and his children? Children must have their parents' flesh and blood in them to be called their sons and daughters, right? If someone without God's flesh and blood says, I am God's child, I am a heavenly child, so I can go to heaven, that is merely a theory or a doctrine that he or she created. That person can never fall within the scope of the covenant promised by God. Am I right? With that kind of condition, we cannot reach salvation, heaven, or eternal life. God gave us the truth of life called the Passover. What is the truth or the feast that God established to plant God's holy flesh and blood in His children? It is the Passover. That is why, although He was going to be crucified the next day, what was He doing tonight, 2,000 years ago? Saying, I eagerly desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. He was teaching the true meaning of the Passover to His disciples. You must keep this and put it into practice. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Apostle Paul said, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is My body, which is for you. In the same way, He took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in My blood, which is poured out for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Apostle Paul preached what Jesus taught in the far regions of Europe, as we have seen in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22, 23, and 24. Why did Apostle Paul preach the Passover, traveling to many regions? Why did Peter and John prepare the Passover, as Jesus had directed them? On the day before the Passover, why did Jesus, who was going to be crucified the next day, say, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you. And why did He explain the meaning of the bread, giving it to them? Why did He teach the meaning of the wine, giving it to them? He eagerly said, This is My body. This is My blood. Have My flesh and blood in you. What is that? God said, By eating and drinking the Passover bread and wine, you, will be my sons and daughters. Let's see 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 17. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you will be my, who? Sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. This relationship between Heavenly Father and His children is achieved through this feast of the truth called the Passover. 
Since we are God's children, what will He do with all the grievous sins we committed in heaven? He will forgive them. That's why He said, This cup is My blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. He let us know that as our heavenly parent, He would carry the cross instead of His children. Right? The Passover has this kind of meaning in it. That is why He said, Whoever eats My flesh and drinks My blood remains in Me and I in him. Doesn't it mean that we will become completely one with God? In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, Apostle Paul said, The cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks is a participation in the blood of Christ, and the bread that we break is a participation in the body of Christ. There were many members, but since they all partook of the one loaf in Christ, he said they were what? They were one body, right? Today, we become one with Christ through the Passover. We may participate in Christ's body and blood. Naturally, children must inherit the flesh and blood of their parents. And the day when we get to inherit the spiritual flesh and blood is the Passover day that we are keeping today. So Jesus said He had eagerly desired to celebrate the Passover. Peter celebrated the Passover. John celebrated it. And all the other apostles celebrated it. And all the members of the early church celebrated it too. Apostle Paul celebrated the Passover too. He worked as a minister of the New Covenant, traveling to Corinth and even to remote regions in Europe to preach the Passover. In the same context, God showed us a scene where He gave the answer to the question, who will be able to enter heaven in Matthew chapter 7. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. In chapter 7, verse 21, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Who did Jesus say will enter heaven? He said, But only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter the kingdom of heaven. Then, is it Father's will to keep the Passover or is it Father's will not to keep it? Like this, God had educated people about the Passover since 3,500 years ago, since the time of Moses. When Jesus came, He emphasized the importance of the Passover once again. Then, why do today's churches not keep the Passover? The churches all over the world are in the midst of a great spiritual crisis. They do not understand what salvation is and what the way to eternal life is. And they just regard the Passover the sacred feast we celebrate today as a normal day like any other. However, all our members of Zion around the world are keeping the Passover holy today in obedience to the will of father and mother and according to all the prophecies and teachings in the Bible. Through the Passover, God has clearly said, only those who do the will of Father can enter the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is not a place where anyone can enter just by saying to me, Lord, Lord. There is another reason God has given us the Passover. All people born on earth are descendants of Adam's line. Humans have flourished and prospered on this earth. Then, can we go to heaven with the blood of Adam and Eve? Can we say we are God's perfect creations if we still have their blood? Never. So we need the precious blood of Jesus Christ. According to Romans chapter 5, verse 14, whom does Adam represent? It describes him as a pattern of Jesus, the one to come. With the flesh and blood of Adam, human beings cannot receive eternal life. However, through the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, 
who is represented as Adam, the incomplete beings, can become the complete beings. The principle of creation, God desires, is not to be born and then die again like Adam, but to create beings who can live forever, having eternal life. This is the most fundamental meaning of God's creation. To fulfill this principle, the precious blood of Jesus Christ was required. So Christ died on the cross for the sins of humanity, wanting everyone to have His holy flesh and His precious blood. And He established the truth of the Passover, which we celebrate today. He established the new covenant Passover to make us perfect through His flesh and blood, because we couldn't become perfect with the blood of Adam. Let's see what blessing God gives to those who have Christ's flesh and blood. Let's take a look at the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 45. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the man from heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, we humans have borne the likeness of Adam. And just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, whose likeness should we bear now? so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. Whom do the above verses refer to? They refer to the first man, Adam, and the last Adam. The first man, Adam, refers to Adam who lived in the Garden of Eden. And the last Adam refers to Jesus, as recorded in Romans chapter 5, verse 14. What do we need in order to resemble the likeness of Christ, the man from heaven? We need the flesh and blood of Christ. Only when we receive His flesh and blood can we call God Father. What does God give to those who have His flesh and blood? Salvation. Let's go to verse 50 regarding that salvation. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. Let's see how we will be changed. Verse 52. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable. And the mortal with what? Immortality. What does immortality mean? It means we have eternal life. Through what has God promised us eternal life? Through the Passover, right? And the mortal with immortality. Verse 54, When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. There are numerous reasons why we keep the Passover today. And the ultimate reason we celebrate it is to be saved and go to heaven, right? Keeping all these things in mind, let us give eternal glory and praise to Elohim for giving us the new covenant Passover. I hope you keep the Passover holy as the day of redemption. Hoping you received much grace, let me conclude this sermon. Thank you very much.